Everyone experiences problems in this dream, suffering and different problems and their outlook on the world and the news and all the things that are happening create a lot of difficulty, challenges, confusion and suffering. And there is a, a non-dual way and a non-dual teaching that can really help you deal with these problems and put them into a non-dual perspective so that you're not overwhelmed by them, so that they don't create so much suffering in your life. And this is a, a particular analogy and, and a way of describing non-dual awareness that Ramana Maharshi, among other people, had come up with during Ramana's life. The... Uh, Film projector had been uh, invented and films were shown on a movie screen, just as they are today. And so this technology gave him an opportunity to use this as an analogy for consciousness, for the self, for awakening in a way. It's an analogy, but it's a, it's a good one. So when you watch a movie... You are involved in the movie if it's a good movie. You go into a movie theater, you see there's just a white screen there, right? Just a white screen. But then when the lights go down and the projector starts, the images appear on the screen, the music appears, and you get very involved in the movie if it's good. You're involved in it. You suspend your disbelief. And for a moment, you are in this movie. You were, are one of the characters and everything that's happening feels real to you. And if somebody's suffering, you suffer. If someone's happy, you're happy. If someone falls in love, you feel love. So whatever's going on, if a tragedy happens, you feel tragedy and you cry. So you're involved in the movie and, and it seems real to you. It all seems real to you. What's happening on the movie screen are a series of images are flickering across the screen, right? And you totally forget about the screen. The screen doesn't exist to you anymore. The images become real. Everything that's happening in the movie, all the images that are projected on the screen become real to you. And so this is the analogy of the movie screen and the images. The images are temporary. They're changing all the time, aren't they? If they just stayed as one image, you would get bored after a while, but they're changing all the time. People are being born, dying, tragedies happening, successes are happening, people are falling in love, fires and, and different disasters are happening. All these things are happening on this movie screen and you're involved in it. But the movie screen itself is not affected by any of the things that are happening on it, any of the images, none of the images affect the movie screen at all. If a fire appears as one of the images, the movie screen is not burnt. If one of the images of, of, uh, of a frozen tundra, you know, with people freezing, the movie screen itself is not cold. None of the images that happen on the movie screen affect the movie screen itself. If one of the characters dies, one of the images of the character dying, the nothing happens to the movie screen. The movie screen is, is the, what all these images appear on, but is not affected by these images that come and go constantly. And the analogy of this is that this is similar to your life, to our life. Right? There are many images that appear in our life, constantly images. There are images that we see when we pay attention to the news, but there are also images that appear in our life. When we have a conversation with somebody, we go outside and we see a sunset or beautiful clouds. All these are images appearing on the screen. And we, our body, is also an image appearing on the screen. Some people have chronic pain you know, in their body. And, and that chronic pain 
is an image appearing on the screen and the body itself is an image appearing on the screen and the person who's experienced these things is an image appearing on the screen everything is an image appearing on the screen including you including me including what we feel including our body and our mind and our thoughts these are all images appearing on the screen and the screen is completely unaffected by any of it if this body dies, does that affect the screen? No, not at all. If this body is in pain, does that affect the screen? Not at all. All these things appear on the screen. So the analogy, this analogy that helps us is when we're focused on the images appearing on the screen, we're not aware of the screen itself. When our attention returns to the screen itself, what we could call consciousness, awareness, the self, or God, or our true nature. When our attention returns to this pure, infinite, eternal screen, the analogy of a screen, then our attention is no longer on the images appearing on the screen. Those images seem to fade away because our attention is now on the screen itself, the experience of the screen itself. Now, because the screen is our true nature, is what we are, is consciousness, awareness, we can't really see the screen Right? We can't stand outside the screen to see the screen. We are the screen. The screen is our true nature. And this person, this self that we think we are, that's another image that's appearing on the screen. We haven't gone deep enough. If all we're seeing is that I am this body mind and this experience of, of life, we haven't gone deep enough to see the screen itself, if that's all we see. But behind this body mind, this world and everything we see on it, there is the screen that it all appears on. Now we're using screen and appearing on as an analogy, right? It's much, much more than that, of course. It's just an analogy. The screen also appears on the screen. And appearing also appears on the screen. And everything that we think and perceive appears on this screen. So it's not really a screen at all. It's the true nature of life. But it's an analogy that can point to this. And when our attention turns to this true nature of what we are, the images that appear in our life, including our body-mind, in chronic pain or whatever else is going on in our life. These are all images appearing on the screen of what we are. And what we are is not affected by them, including pain. So the more our attention goes to this true nature of what we are, the less it is on the images that are appearing, the temporary images that are appearing. And they're all temporary, aren't they? This body is temporary. How long will it live? If it's very healthy, maybe live for 90 or 100 years. But that's all. Then it's no longer here, just dust. So it's not something to really rely on and be identified with and have our focus on so much. What about our thoughts? They're changing all the time. Our beliefs. We could believe something for quite a long time, but when there's no more brain, we're not going to believe it anymore. So these are all temporary. Everything in life is temporary. Everything in life is changing, coming and going all the time. But what we're calling the screen does not change. It's infinite and eternal and limitless. It has no limitations. It has no borders or boundaries. There's nothing that we can say about it. When I say a screen, I'm just using an analogy for it as a way for the mind to begin to understand it 
And then, of course, it can't understand it. But it points to it. And if you can get to that place where you realize that everything in your life is, is a temporary appearance on this screen, what is the screen? What is the screen that we're using this analogy to point to? What is this screen? So our attention can move to something much more than these temporary appearances, including our body and mind. It can open to something much, much more than that. And this is what non-duality is pointing to. Now, we cannot understand non-duality with our mind, really. It's an experience that has nothing to do with our thoughts or our perceptions or words or beliefs. All those fade away when we experience the screen of non-duality itself which is our true nature. And that's why we can experience it because this is what we are. So when attention returns to this, and I made another video of the weekly um, silent transmission that I do that opened up to the same analogy of the movie screen and then left a lot of silence where the transmission from this screen from what this screen represents comes through so you can sit with this and allow yourself to directly experience this but here in this video i'm just using words to explain it and and then next look at this other video of the silent transmission and feel what it feels like to experience what's beyond all this, me, myself, my life, my body, mind, the world, what's beyond all this and behind all this and not separate from all this. Because in the end, the screen itself dissolves. When we use this analogy and we're using words, we, we think that the screen is something that's separate from the images, but in actuality, there is no separation at all. So there is no screen separate from the images that appear on it. And none of the images are separate from any of the other images. And there is no separation anywhere. And at that point, all thoughts fall apart because they cannot they're only an obstacle to experiencing what's true. But as a beginning, as an introduction pointer, using the idea, the analogy of the movie screen and the images appearing on the movie screen can be very helpful. It can get you not to be so identified to the images of your life, the appearances of your life, the body and mind and thoughts and beliefs, not to be so attached and identified with us and see that there's something more here. There's something much, much more here. Because all of these images, body, mind, self, world, and all of this, this is what we call the dream. Because it is very much like a dream even though it appears real. Our sleeping dreams also appears real. And when we watch a movie on the screen, that appears real if, if we get involved in it. So also this life is also a dream. It's not that it doesn't exist. It's just that it doesn't exist in any way that we think it does or can think it does or could ever think it does. It's entirely different from this. And the only way we can really understand this is this direct experience of it. Even to call it it is not, there are no words that can really describe this. This or it is it also don't make any sense. It simply is. And even the words it and is don't make any sense to it. So that's what I mean. You cannot understand this with your mind. You have to directly experience it. But before you do, 
the analogy of the movie screen and the images appearing on it allow you to be a little bit less attached, to find a little bit of peace and freedom in this as your mind begins to move back to what this movie screen is pointing to, this pure, infinite, and eternal movie screen that everything that exists appears on. To be able to turn your attention to that, what's behind this body, mind, this person, and everything that it perceives and experiences, what's behind all this? You can experience this because it is what you are. You just can't hold it in front of you. Like you cannot hold awareness in front of you. Awareness, the practice of being aware of awareness is not that you hold awareness in front of you and become aware of it. Aware, awareness of awareness is simply the being of awareness because it is what you are. So everything that you're aware of is an object of awareness that awareness is aware of, like the images on the movie screen. But awareness itself is the movie screen. And so it cannot see itself. It can only see images. But it is itself. And you are this. So your awareness of it is your beingness of it, is just this pure, infinite, eternal being. Now, I've used a lot of words, and that inevitably is confusing as we try to understand what it means, the screen, and what it means, the images appearing on it, and what it means that my body and mind is one of the images appearing on the screen and not what I am. Because it really can't understand that. The understanding is when you let go of all the images. All images. Me and my life. The world, body, mind, self, all of it all the spiritual teachings and all teachings, all knowledge, to let it all go. Let the analogy of the movie screen go. And if you do, here is a, is a sense of great peace, great freedom, And a recognition that this is always here. This has always been here. It is always here. And it always will be here. It has no beginning or end. No limitations whatsoever. It doesn't have an identity. You can't identify with it and say, oh, that's what I am or even to call it awareness or consciousness or self or God. None of these things are enough to describe what this is. So we don't need to understand it. We are it in our simple being, our isness is complete understanding. So you may already feel a little bit of this, a little bit of this freedom, a little bit of this peace, a little bit of this bliss that is here for no reason at all. It simply is. And the less you try to understand it, the less you try to go to your mind to understand what's happening, the more you'll experience. And the experience of this, the being, the isness of this, 
is a profound healing for the problems and suffering in the world, the problems and suffering that you experience, the confusion, Because here, everything is complete. Nothing that exists is separate from this. And there is a profound wisdom, but not of thought, behind all of this, that is also experienced in this being itself. It understands everything. But not the way we think. Not as an understanding, as a being, as an isness. And even what we think being an isness is, is not what I'm talking about because no words can describe this. And the less you try to understand it, the more you'll experience of it. And just allow it to be. And this being, this isness, is awakening, awakening from this dream. Because in the dream, the images that appear in the screen, we think we know what they are. We have names for them. We have knowledge about them, which is all fine. This is how we function in the dream. We need to have this, and we do. And our thoughts are very useful in this. but not for reality itself, not for actual truth. That will always be beyond thought. And yet it will also always be what we are. So when we let go, of this dream, of me and my life, of body, mind, thoughts, beliefs, knowledge, world, perceptions, sensations, experiences, past, present, future, when we let go of all this, the truth of what's here reveals itself to us. It's not revealing anything, it's not trying to reveal, it's simply when Illusion is out of the way. Truth is reveal, is here because it always is. There's nothing in the way of it anymore. And that's what this is. So this is a little bit of a transmission too because to truly understand it, we need this space of direct experience. We need to experience what it is to simply be, not a person being, not an identity being, just being itself. There's no effort needed no practice, nothing that we can do to be, nothing that we need to do to be. This is why often the the deepest and most profound teaching is in silence, because no thoughts are getting in the way. You're no longer trying to understand what I'm saying or compare it to other thoughts. You let it all go. And you simply are this.
thank you, my friend.